Nerds Talking, the podcast. Yo, we talk about lightsabers, stunning your TV screens, what you want to stream, everything beyond your dreams. Want to talk about movies, sports, or even politics. Go ahead and tune in to us. We'll give you all of it. Whatever you debate, next box of PlayStation, Marvel the DC, Mac or PC. Terra flops when the movie drops, gigabytes, chips, RAM. No matter what it is, we got all of it. Welcome to the show. Nerds Talking, the podcast. Welcome to Nerds Talking, the podcast. I'm here with Laura, Carlos, and I'm Lafayette, and we are joined by two guests, and they just popped in right on time. We have Gil Smith in the house. He is uh, the man of the Ricardo Montalban Foundation and Theater in Hollywood, and Lynn Tejada, who is with us, which I met last week. She is the PR for, Carlos, what is the firm called? Oh, Green Galactic is my own company. Oh, sorry. No, no, you got it, Lynn. You got it. No, you pop in. You know, I mean, (laughs) Carlos was just talking about it, so I kind of threw it at him. And uh, but it's all good. It's all good. Um, so thanks for joining us. Uh, I mean, you guys, we're here to talk about a fantastic show you guys have right now in Hollywood at the Ricardo Montalban Theater, which I saw last week. Um, that was was that your first show you guys have put on? like full production wise we, we are we started this with russell Beatty, who was the creator of empire strips back uh a year and a half ago when he was on board and he he and i started conjuring up ways of of uh let's say collaborating his work and uh our theater uh to really do a full-scale production from the startup and yeah it's it's from ground up we produced it and it's it's we're looking to get the, it into the light and to have make people laugh as opposed to having a drama that is about dysfunctional families. Uh, and it's a it's a wonderful night out. It's a follies. It is. Oh, definitely. Is. Um, so, yeah, Lafayette, you saw it on opening night. I did see it on opening night. I saw um, it's so we'll, we'll get into the whole entire show. But um, Lynn, if you had to. um summarize the show for people that want to go see it how would you put it you know it's so interesting because when I when I go to answer that question I have to reel back for a second to say how excited I was and I am to see new work by Russell Beatty who as Miguel said did the Empire Strips Back and we've been promoting it as this amazing burlesque and parody and and so when I finally saw it I was blown away and I shouldn't have been blown away but I was so blown away by the the talent of the singers and the dancers and it was it was almost like a like in a more mature production um not as parody I think um but it's it's you know it's the whole can I say the Batman universe here Gil yeah sure. it's, it's the whole it Gotham is. City kind of universe and characters um brought to life and Russell he's kind of this creative genius um many people who came to see it um are familiar with his book um that he based this production on and it's like an alternative history of gotham city between the world wars and so there's like it's like the review format and follies uh it's 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 a magical thing i'm gonna let gil <laughs> and also lafayette saw it. you could you could tell us what, what oh yeah no i'm gonna yeah yeah uh but gil um yeah, I mean, what? Give us your your take on, on that whole world because I did originally see it with the book, and then somebody took the book, and it may have it may have been uh, somebody that helped with the book, but they actually put it on a YouTube video and they broke down the whole world of Batman and its villains and from 1930. It's so good too, the whole YouTube and breakdown. Russell, I think there, there's well, Russell did a version, but uh, there are a lot of fan videos that have sprouted up from that book and and. Uh, and he's got a large following. My uh, my inclination to take on a project like this was in part because of the history that Hollywood has for the Follies and for the big dance numbers and uh, in the films where MGM and Screen Gems and Samuel Goldwyn Mayer and all these great, you know, the Ziegfeld Follies all started here, uh, you know, and were put up on film and on stage and including Josephine Baker here in 1950s, uh, or as late as the 1950s. And 
and so having that genre come back live is truly an immersive experience. And that overused term is now being brought to life and, and, and basically disorienting our audience, as Lynn said, with fantastic talents of each scene that we are presenting. And it's basically 12 scenes uh, and uh, with an intermission. And, uh, and we take advantage of the talent that is presented by the individual and Russell's genius to create pairings with modern music, rock and roll, and uh, the comedy that we're presenting. Yeah, it's a fantastic show. Um, help me with the title again. Is it is it Bat? Say, say it again. Bat at Follies of Bat 1939. Bat there you go. Bat at Follies of 1939. It is a Batman parody that again it's a vaudeville burlesque show with everything in it singing to uh really like humor especially the riddler um and you got uh really i mean the scarecrow was phenomenal people i mean i can't even i don't even know how to explain it but that whole bit was great uh there's like again the burlesque part of it with the strip tease you know that's done like super super choreography like it's really well done from poison ivy doing hers to to Catwoman's opening scene, to uh, Batgirl doing the 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 acrobat you know acrobatic uh, presentation, all that. I mean, you, it's just you get it all. You get tap dancing, you get singing, you get comedy. But if you're a huge fan of Batman, it's just a lot of fun to kind of get a different take on everything. But sticking to what you know about Batman, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't take away. Like it doesn't like 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 for instance, Mister Freeze is singing about his wife. And the and the idea of silence, how he can't speak to his wife anymore, and his song is the sound of silence, and how he's like he kn he knows he'll never get to talk, speak to her again, you know, as she's encased in glass, right? So you, everything keeps the mythos of Batman. It's not like you're it's not making fun of it's it's having fun with it, right? I think if you're oh, a yeah. huge fan of Batman, and just in general comics, or even just you want to go watch a fun show, it's a great show to to catch. Uh, like I said, I saw it and it was a blast. I mean, it was a lot of everybody in the audience had a blast with it. Yeah, like, well, I've I've had a number of uh, let's say uh, motion picture executives come through the theater in the first week, and they're just gushing over the quality of our production, and um, we're all aware of the the sensitivity uh, in treating IPs properly. And, uh, you know, so because it can go overboard and it can be gross and, and, and uh, uh, mistaken for, I mean, this is art. This is high art uh, at, at its finest. And we want this show, we're publicly uh, open for six weeks with this show. Uh, it, we follow up with Vampire Circus uh, in the fall. And then we come back with Empire Strips Back, which was uh, Russell's first hit here. Uh, it comes in on October 10th. Uh, and tried and true, we we had 12 weeks that uh, when they pulled out in early 23, we were selling out every night. So the word of mouth, once we start up with a brand new show like this, uh, we're relying upon the fact that when people see the sh actual show, because when Russell came to me, it didn't exist other than having done one in a coffee, coffee house uh, 12 years ago. And as a fully fleshed out show, we had to bring it here and start building props over the last year and casting uh, unique individuals. And uh, it's coming, it's, it. I mean, I am, I, I'm really proud of the, the crew, the people who we've developed inside our theater. Russell is a consummate um, uh, professional and artist because his work, it just has that look. I call him the Banksy of Australia. So, yeah. There you go. Yeah, like I said, it's 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 a lot of fun, the show. And like Harley Quinn, like so everything is played perfectly. Nothing is out of place. Like I said, it's just it's just a blast. And again, you don't have to be a fan. If you're a fan of vaudeville and burlesque, I mean, you're getting, you're getting everything, comedy and everything. So I thought the Joker bit was hilarious because if people don't, the Joker comes out like very nonchalant singing about how, you know, he's he's terrifying. But it's very like, like very like happy go lucky, almost like like he is like the Joker should be right. Like I said it's a lot of fun. Um, and uh, Carlos, do you have anything uh, you want want to ask? 
Yeah, that um, Empire Strips Back is actually in my area right now. So do you recommend going to see it? Oh, it's at the Great Star in San Francisco? It's actually in the Sacramento area. Oh, Sacramento area. Go yeah. ahead. Oh, yeah. please. Yeah. Uh, All right. That, that is, uh, I mean, they look, that show has such great timing to it. It's so much fun. Uh, we, you know, it, that's part of the joy of, of running theater is when you have partners uh, who are in it to to create uh, fun mayhem and uh, empire uh, the the emperor and the emperor's guard scene alone is worth the the ticket price and I'm, right. I'm not saying any more than that but uh, it's it was a, absolutely a showstopper all right, sold uh, I'll get my tickets tonight all right sold um, so Jill tell us a little bit about the Montauban Theater and your relationship to Ricardo Montalban, I correct? Is that correct? Oh, I, I was his son-in-law. Um, I married his daughter in 1978. And uh, we met, uh, I was a photographer at the time, uh, and she was a model. And uh, her aunt was Loretta Young. And if you're familiar with Loretta Young, uh, she, ha she had her Aunt Loretta's looks and her father's demeanor and not the other way around. So it worked really well <laughs> as being a, a husband and wife. Um, it was very funny. The first time I met Ricardo, uh, I was with my future wife, Anita, and she knew as a photographer because we met on a shoot. And so she, when we got to the front door, she said, don't tell him you're a photographer and uh, tell him you're a creative director. I, I didn't question. I just went ahead and introduced myself she she told me later she goes she they think all photographers are paparazzi i did that mm. so 20 years later uh we're at a party down at the orpheum theater after an eric idol show and a man comes up to me and i was running the theater at the time and uh he said are you in the industry and i said yeah i'm a creative director at the 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 montalban theater and i got a nudge from my wife and she's and so he after the man left she said, you're not a creative director, you're a photographer. And I said, I'm all confused. <laughs> anyway, she was wonderful. She passed away, unfortunately, uh, uh, with a battle of cancer in, in November of 21. And, oh, wow. um, you know, and, and so it's been a, uh, uh, an interesting odyssey over the last couple of years because we were, you know, we had combined the pandemic I, you know, we, you know, she had been diagnosed in 2016 uh, with the cancer and uh, it's, you know, it, her memory and, and what our life is, is continuing on with some of the work that I'm doing. Um, and, uh, and hopefully they, you know, we, we agreed uh, to a, a doctor's uh, using the cells that were attacking her for future research and I've been told that actually several breakthroughs with the cell line that they formed with her cells have created possibilities for stopping that particular cancer, PPC, in the future. So, wow. yeah. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's. There's a lot of bittersweet uh, things that we do in life, and right. Um, and the theater, to tell you the truth, is is about comedy. It's about dance, and it's about life. And that's that's what Ricardo really represented. Uh, he wanted to embrace, uh, and so did uh, Anita, my wife, embrace the community and bring people together and not be divisive. And this is uh, where we host Old La Mexico Film Festival. We have the Los Angeles Jazz Society come in for a concert annually for a fundraiser with top names. We're, you know, we're doing the sit down shows now. Uh, and uh, we pioneered the rooftop movies uh, back mm. years ago when uh, uh, nobody was doing anything on the rooftops. And uh, we're now changing the rooftop into being the, an iceberg lounge. Oh, and, nice. and our plans are this summer is that while we're running uh, by bad ads on the main stage, we're going to find specialty acts to come on and do 15 minute, 20 minute acts on the hour or something in between the shows and after the shows so that people who come for the, uh, we have double bills, basically uh, twos on Fridays and Saturdays. So if people see the early show and want to stay for the late show, we, we have a, a package where 
you know, we can, you know, bring them back and, and uh, a good value for their night. So, and I can tell you, seeing bad ads more than once is not overdoing it. Uh, they're just subtleties to the way the, the scenes work that it, you just, it's a, we laugh every time. I mean, it's simple stuff. That's the beauty of live theater, right? That you no two scenes are ever the same. So being able to watch it multiple times is always a delight. I think that a lot of that has been lost over the years. So I think that's really cool. Oh yeah, I mean, we take notes every night and we, we try to improve, uh, you know, from day one to day you know, throughout a, a, a series. And and quite frankly, the show will evolve uh, because of the, mm -hmm. of the, the way the spontaneity or the timing, uh, it was, you know, it was different every night this last weekend and it's going to be different coming up. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Now the, the Montalban as Ricardo, now was it hit, did he, I guess, ground up? Has it always been the Montalban? Oh, no, no. It, it, it was built, the, the theater itself was uh, built in 1925 and opened in oh, January okay. 27. Uh, Ricardo was five years old at the time and living in Mexico. Uh, but uh, it was really funny because it was uh, built by the Wilkes brothers. And uh, at that time, Paramount Pictures was across the way on Vine Street. Uh, and uh, C.B. DeMille, who was the head of Paramount, uh, got into a big argument with the, uh, 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 the brothers. And the Wilkes brothers were the grand nephews of John Wilkes Booth. So... Oh. Yes, they 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 were leaving back east because everybody was giving them such heat for their their granduncle's act of, of assassination that they thought they could come to the west coast and get a clean wow. start. Well, just like it's kind of national news, huh? right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even in the sixties, that's yeah, national. It was, yeah, it was the eighteen sixties. They didn't travel very far, so they figured going to California and Hollywood, nobody would know that it happened. So, but they they proceeded to get into their own trouble because in nineteen thirty two, after the theater was opened, one of the brothers was indicted for laundering twelve and a half million dollars, and that's a lot of money in those days. Uh, and what I figured is that the you know it was it was loose it was a the prohibition era and there was a lot of cash rolling around and how many seats are filled as opposed to uh you know it, 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 nobody's really sitting there counting them so they when they were turning in their receipts there were several additional hundreds of seats every night that may not have had people in them but they were paying uh, the, the way for the, the theater to stay open um you know that's uh, that's my supposition right now i uh, you know, it, I'm always looking for ways to support the theater. So did anybody tell the booths, look, you're not allowed nowhere near the balcony. Nowhere. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm not even near a theater. <laughs> Let me go in. Yeah, outside. They were, yeah, they were probably stuffing the seats with cash. You know, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, and yeah. uh, Lynn, can you tell me a little bit about kind of your background and how you're involved with the show? Like, what what is your connection? So um, Gil brought me in to be the venue's publicist um, oh. for, for one particular show back in, I think, maybe 2017, uh, Enra, the Japanese performing arts, dancing, multimedia. It was very cool. Um, and then he, he brought me in to be the official publicist starting in maybe 2018, um, which is a thrill and an honor for me, but it's also kind of perfectly aligned with my own history as a publicist because I'm an arts and culture publicist. So I traditionally historically have worked with, you know, artists and musicians and filmmakers and theater makers and dancers and choreographers. And so all of those things happen at the Montauban under their roof or on the roof as far as the screenings <laughs> go. So it's it's it feels like a match made in heaven for me at least. So it's fabulous. That's how I'm involved. Awesome. Thanks for asking. Yeah, no, I mean, like I said, the show's phenomenal. The theater's the theater's great because it has like an old, very old vibe to it. Like, uh, like, like it has like you can tell it has all the years in it. You know what I mean? Like, and Ricardo's everywhere. He's everywhere. I mean, nobody knows Ricardo Montalban. You know him from Fantasy Island, okay? And the Wrath of Khan. Con, Star Trek. Yeah, we know him from Khan. No, like, I know, no, no. I grew up <laughs> knowing him from Fantasy him. Island. Growing up watching Fantasy Island, and then you know the plane, the plane. Like that's how I know. 
Ricardo. You know, it's I wasn't funny, a big that, Trekkie. That was Hervé Villachez's line. Yeah, it, oh, it, it was. No, I know. I yeah, know. Yeah, but I know everybody, saying, when they refer to the scene and remember Ricardo, they always quote Hervé. The plane, the plane. Yeah, I know. I I, it's just, <laughs> but that's all I know. I mean, I mean, everybody knows Ricardo, but I, like I said, it's a phenomenal show. Um, I think it's, it's, is it twice on Fridays, twice on Saturdays, one on, once on Sunday? Yes, it's Thursday, uh, uh, Thursday 8 o'clock curtain, mm-hmm. Friday, Saturday, 7.30 and 10 curtains, and then Sunday at 7. And there you so, go. Yeah, and it's, it, we're going to be rocking it hard. The, uh, the, the, just the choreography, the, there's one man who's called Two-Face, and we have a scene with him playing two pianos at once. Yes, dueling pianos, that's uh, right. You're never yes. going to see Batman and Robin tap dance like <laughs> this ever again. It, they get out, and these two guys uh, that are the dancers, Kenji and uh, and uh, oh Jordan, I think is his name. I'm sorry, I, I'm trying to remember all the actors' names. Uh, so they they are just like the Mills brothers, and so we're really experiencing what a folly show uh, resembled, or you know, in our minds, but also in reality, the choreography is phenomenal. We even, have, we even have an overhead camera that looks down so you see the patterns that are reminiscent of that period. And they they we, they come up on our side screens. So it, it, is an, it is just a full out experience to immerse people in fun and in entertainment. Yeah, the lead singer who opens the show, she does three numbers, she's phenomenal. Oh yeah, Dana. Yeah, phenomenal. Yeah, she's got a great voice. Uh, yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, and we're actually she, she that we're right now she opens, but it, it's the Joker that actually opens the show, and and uh, we had to leave the lead actor of, for the Joker back in Australia, uh, and uh, he couldn't get a visa to come into the United States, so we've been recasting that role. Oh. Uh, that, and the opening scene is still kind of suspect, so it's sort of like a a Saturday Night Live dead open when she comes in and talks about the devil. Uh, you know, I, I had Shadow Stevens, who I'm working on another project with uh, called Mental Radio uh, Live. And he was sitting next to me at the opening and he goes, why such a downer? And I, well, it is. But, you know, it was it was it, it's time to be after a, a comedy act with with uh, Joker that's still being fleshed out. So more to come. Yeah, I mean, it sets the tone. Because you go from that to Catwoman, you know, like, again, it goes all around, right? You get comedy, okay. you get dance, and it, I guess I got plenty of notes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, was watching, I took plenty of notes when I was watching the show. Yeah. But you, people should check out this show. It's like, it's, if you're in L.A. or the L.A. area, uh, it's in Hollywood, Ricardo Montalban Theater. It runs until what? When does it run till? Uh, through J- uh, July 15th. And if we have the popularity and we uh, have some stimulated, you know, audience uh, participation uh, and we see it, it it has the room to be extended so well there you go shit i'm the, i'm in st louis i'm like you guys are talking it up i want to see this i've been meaning to take a trip to california maybe i'll come for a weekend see the show see lafayette and carlos in person it sounds amazing truly i love live theater and i love burlesque and dancing and singing and i love batman this sounds awesome and batman drinks at the bar Yes, yes, yes. That's even better. Yeah, I, I, I love to drink. We all yeah. know this. I love to drink. Yeah, well, 1939 is one of my favorite periods of time. I mean, art wise and music, you know, prior to World War II. And so we we have a new drink that is uh, 39 with a twist. Uh, and, you know, it's a fun uh, little number. And uh, what is it? What is it? Uh, I can't tell you the secret recipe, but we're going to be selling it on, on, on basically out of our carts with cigarette girls going up and down the, the aisle Cute. in intermission now. And it's going to be in a mason jar. So, Cute. yeah, it's going to be very, very like <laughs> prohibition kind of look to it. And bathtub uh, gin. That's the secret ingredient. Bathtub there you go. gin. <laughs> there you go. This is the drinks they have the Dark Knight, which is the vodka, peach schnapps, orange juice, cranberry juice. The cat's meow, which is tequila, margarita, sweet and sour, and lime, and the pale smile, which I had, is the vodka, coconut rum, peach schnapps, orange juice, and pineapple juice. And that oh. one is phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. A, yeah. Well, Joel Ramos is our uh, our director of facilities and one of our he's our bartender and he curates all these drinks. 
So uh, well, great job. I have amazing uh, things to say about him and his abilities and everybody else at the theater. Uh, everybody on the stage crew has been trained by us. And, uh, you know, and Russell is, is, is the conductor of this uh, little train of, of rock and roll. So well, there you go. Uh, how to get and lit. Oh, go for it. Yeah. What were you saying, Gil? Oh, I was just saying, you know, we got to get on that, that bandwagon and, uh, you know, just keep it stimulated and, and have fun for the rest of the years that uh, I'm working here. There you go. Uh, and Lynn, before this, what did you, what did you do at your PR firm? Like any huge projects or any big, big actors or artists that you represented or still do? Um, well, besides the Montalban, which is a thrill because there's always new things coming in there. Like, yep. and, you know, huge, huge entertainment, you know, brands also, use that amazing facility as their own. So when Netflix is a joke, the festival is happening throughout the month of May. They did 10, I think, shows. Deal, oh, right? nice. And the, the biggest star for that was David Letterman. Yeah. And I think those are all probably sold out shows. Um, but in my own, so in two days, the end of this week, my company, Green Galactic, will celebrate 31 years in business. So I'm going to claim old age and I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember all the things that... Sort of just the highlights, but, just the highlights. Um, some of the filmmakers that I've I've gotten to work with over the years, um, Michelle Gondry was certainly a highlight. Um, I worked on um, a film called Tokyo with him and the famous Korean director. I want to I don't want to butcher his name. Uh, the Paradise Guy. I mean Parasite. Oh, oh, Parasite. Yes, yes, yes. I saw that on on your guys' uh, site. Yes, I, you know what? I forgot his name too. It's like no, Carlos well, might know it. Boon, no, yeah, you're right. We're, gonna, we're, gonna, gonna, Ho. we're just bon, messing it up completely. Bong bon Joon Ho, right? Exactly, bon exactly. Yeah. Um, other other films by filmmakers. Um, Werner Herzog. I worked on his films. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Larry Clark, kids. John Reese, the documentary uh, documentary filmmaker. Um, his very first film, which is my personal background, which is um, techno music and underground. Mm -hmm. dance music i come from the suburbs of detroit so he had better living through circuitry in 1990 <clears throat> and then i worked on his graffiti documentaries bomb it and bomb it too and then i loved working with Stuart gordon um he did reanimator the musical based oh, on his I, film that's interesting and that was a riot and it just it played different theaters it it, it was so much fun it was unbelievable um rocky horror picture shows 35th anniversary Oh, and um, William Castle, this is so fun. So William Castle's daughter, Terry Castle, hired Green Galactic to do um, novels she pretended were by her father after his death. And so they were, oh, they were for young yeah. adults. And that was, that was a silly thing. And then how can I forget that, um, yeah, Green Galactic back in the day in the late 90s, early 2000s, we opened a second location in New York in Dumbo and this new little film festival called Tribeca Film Festival hired us to do the inaugural um, event or events there. We had our New York office take care of that. So anyway, on it, lots of techno artists and everything, visual art, theater, dance. I'm on the board of Dance Camera West, which is an amazing um, dance film festival, but it's not a festival about dance. It's that kind of hybrid genre called screen dance or dance on film, where the films are made as a, a really collaborative effort between a cinematographer and a choreographer. And that's an amazing festival that happens in, in January. Anyway, I'll well, there stop. You go. No, there you go. On and on and on. <laughs> no, that's fine. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it's a great show. Definitely check it out. Um, Gil, pitch everybody the show so they can go see it and, uh, you know, let them know, give them a good pitch of like, Hey, this is why you should see the show. I mean, I've already hyped it up, but you know, give, give them one good pitch. If you're looking for a unique experience in dance and uh, harmony uh, with surprises in comedy, come to the Montalban and see Bad Ads Follies 1939. There you go. We'll put the Yay! link in the description um, so you guys can get tickets or go, you know, go to the show, read all about it. Um, you know, we'll even put the link to the YouTube, like the whole background of the, the show and, and everything. And like I said, it's such a, even the show itself has kind of its own mythos with the YouTube videos and the book that came out. And then you go watch the show and it's kind of all comes together. And 
like I said, it's cool. They even have memorabilia when you walk in to the theater. There's Batman's cowl, and there's like Catwoman's, you know, whip and so forth, and the Joker this, and the Riddler's that, and you, you can see all this cool stuff that they made just for this. That the, almost like you walked into again, like a like a Warner Brothers museum in a sense. Like, oh, this is cool. Like, look at all this stuff they they made. Like, immersive, for, immersive is, yeah. experience. You yeah, you gotta get all, in, all of it. And then you, people people are taking pictures with everything. Oh, the Batmobile shows up. I just I'm just saying, you guys <laughs> gotta go see the show. The Batmobile shows up. <laughs> you know, so so there you go. So thanks for coming on, Gil, Lynn. Really okay. appreciate it. Like I said, the show is phenomenal. Might have to make a second trip. Because you gotta come back. I we guarantee you come back like soon, you said, Lafayette. It, and you know what? Did you get the um the little bat ice cream cone? No. That was no. Russell's idea and Hoel. He created it. It's got, you know, two little, two little bats. I saw it. I saw horns. it on, I think, Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did. But it's no, really... definitely, definitely make another visit and check out the show. Because even when I saw it on Instagram, I was like, hey, this is slightly different than what I saw. Yeah, and the rooftop, like Gil was saying, will be open with the igloo. And it's going to be like every night there's new things unfolding. That's very cool. Like, uh, well, like Gil said, you can you can adjust things. You can on the fly make it. You, you can always improve things, even if you think that's ah, already good. 100%. And you can make it more entertaining and everything. I mean, that's what's great about it. And and it's already entertaining. So if you can make it more entertaining, well, might, might, you know, might overload. So there you go. So Our thanks again. Letters. Thank you guys yeah. for having us. No, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for, for coming. coming on. We really yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah. So thanks um, for letting us there you go. Somebody check out the link All right. uh, below. Check it out on YouTube. This will be up on YouTube. People can check out the link there to get tickets. Go to the show, the Ricardo Montalban Theater in Hollywood. We'll take a break here on Nurse Talking to Podcast. We'll be right back after this. Hi, Laura here, telling you that you should check out Impolite Society this week on all of your podcast forums and also on YouTube because we are starting video podcasting on Monday. Our most recent episode, our newest video episode is in regards to pedophiles. What really happens to pedophiles in prison? Look us up, Impolite Society, wherever you get your podcasts or YouTube. Welcome back to Nerds Talking the Podcast. I'm here with Carlos, Laura, and I'm Lafayette. Remember to rate, subscribe, review, turn on notifications, tell your friends every Friday, new episodes of Nerds Talking the Podcast. You can find us on YouTube at Nerds Talking. You can find videos there. Yes. Yes. So, videos. Speaking of videos, uh -huh. y'all can check out Impolite Society on YouTube. Impolite Society Podcast. We're making our YouTube debut. We already got a slightly insulting comment, but you know what? Really? Can I can't well what is it? Um, something along the lines of it's disturbing to see my two Catholic aunts use such foul language and uh what was it? So somebody you know. No. <laughs> it was it was some rando that was like you sound like two two of my Catholic oh, aunts. Oh you sound like oh. got it. And because I was like, you're too Midwestern. You're too Catholic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Must yeah. Be Midwestern. Yeah. Uh, they're like advocating for unbridled violence and using such foul language. I was like, I'll take it. <laughs> You'll take any comment. Yeah. I'll, no, I mean, it wasn't pure hate. He said I was somewhere between mildly entertained and appalled. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm going to leave a comment too. I'm going to for. Mm hmm. <laughs> I'm leave a comment. Mine's gonna say, oh, "Sounds crap, like I got poop life. on my shoes." Yeah. No, you're gonna say mildly entertaining but appalling. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm hmm. All right. Well, there now, you go. In society. What happens to pedophiles in prison? Look us up. There you go. Wait, look up the pedophiles in prison. Look up the episode. Oh, okay. In polite okay. society. Mm, well, I saw somebody recently wearing a T-shirt. It said. Kill a rapist and murder a pedophile. Yeah. And I'm like, hmm, well, no. both are murder. Yeah. And I'm not going to give up my life for these types of people. So yeah. It's... Justice take them. Yeah. And then I saw a car at a stoplight on the back of the window, a big vinyl sticker. It said, kill your local pedophile. And it had a guy on his knees and some chick behind him with a gun. I'm like, well. I don't know who my local pedophile is, so find out real easy. There's a registry. Yeah, or tune into Impolite Society. 
<laughs> you guys, you, you guys live, yeah, do you guys give locations? No. I like I just have a list. You guys name it. Gary Joseph, 721 <laughs> Gilland Street. They're like, what the hell? You give everybody? That's very local. We're, we're, no, we're not going that niche. <laughs> No, it's it's just a sentiment in general. The justice system is way too lenient on these guys. Average uh is sixteen years in prison. That's really not- yeah. No, it's gotta be longer than that. If you especially if it's a rape thing, you take a child's innocence yeah. and life away. Yeah. Well, not murder. I mean No, 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 I know I'm not murder, but I'm just saying their childhood, their <laughs> innocence, their yeah, yeah. life away for a hundred percent. It's like death of childhood is murder of childhood. Right, 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 right. As it should be. But anyway, okay. I digress. Don't digress. Don't <laughs> don't don't digress. Don't digress. Yeah, don't, don't you know people always say, um, what's that when they start with uh, I don't mean to when I say something like I don't mean to uh what is it when when you're basically being rude or disrespectful? I don't offend you yeah i don't mean to offend you but i'm like well you are you just started <laughs> like you Clearly can't say you're that gonna offend me right <laughs> yeah, now. You're trying to soften the blow of a controversial <laughs> opinion no i know but it just it's so, just funny, funny that way yeah do you think 16 years and and an expanded butthole is a good enough term no no okay and what if it's 16 years in solitary confinement no Ooh. What if it's 16 years? It doesn't matter. 16 years, oh. like whatever you're going through is the fact that you are unleashed upon the public again after 16 years. And How about we just drop them in a jungle? And yeah, then... that's better. The rehab rates are really low for these people. And so, yeah, it's just. Oh, yeah. I've heard like many stories where the guy's let out and right away he's at the school. Or yep. at the playground, or taking photos. I'm like, yep. dude, did you not learn nothing? No, they didn't, because it's. A so you said 16 is the max. Is that what you said? No, 16 is the average. 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 When looking at um, child sexual offenses, 16 years is the average. Meaning Don't give so- it all away. Save it for implied society, I'm people. Sorry. All right, you're right. If you're curious, yeah. then call Lafayette. If you're curious, go to implied society on YouTube or anywhere on you get podcast platform. Um, just like put them all like in a raft and just drop them in the middle of the ocean. Mm, or crocodile just, yeah. pit. That's another one. Mm, yeah, Ooh, crocodile the pit. Amazon River. That's a good one too. Piranha. Mm. Hmm. Or like anyway. So let me get to my challenge. story of Father of the Year. Ooh. Oh, you won an award. Get off that topic. Wow! Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> How are you nominated? Uh, I nominated my. I tried to nominate myself today, and then you did something. That I you did disqualified. It <laughs> it, uh, it blew up in my face. Is oh, what it did. Wow. So here's what happened. My kid lost his first tooth, Aww. and so I was like, "Okay, Daddy's gonna get you a surprise." So I went to Walmart to get these mini minion mystery boxes because he likes the minions. And then I noticed one of there's two boxes. One was full, brand new box. And the other one was empty, but in the top of these boxes is one of the chase figures. It was kind of one of the rare ones in the top of the box, almost showing you, hey, you could get this figure in the box, right? So as a kid working the aisle, I'm like, hey, man, do you want to sell me this empty box? It's empty, but do you want to sell it to me? And wait, he goes, wait, this is like the box that all the, the actual product comes is in. Is in, right. Yes. Got it. Oh. And within that display box was the chase figure in the top. Encased in plastic, right? You can't just grab it. Got it. So I asked him, and he said, oh, we just throw them away. You can ask them, but they'll probably just give it to you. Oh, right, that's cool. So I have the box, and I bought four chase figures, or not four chase figures, but four mystery boxes for him, which is what I was originally going to do until I saw the empty one. So I get to the front, and I'm like, hey, George said, uh, and even George is like, they might not know me. I'm like, okay, cool. But I'm going to say your name anyway. I can't just go up there and go, hey, can I take this box? So anyway, so I asked the guy at the register. I'm like, hey. And at first, when I looked at the register, or the registers, I'm like, I got to find someone competent. I can't just go up to anybody. This is Walmart, right? So I found my target. This guy looked This guy looked the same age as George and kind of knew what he was doing. Profiling. You got it. Good yeah, job. I profiled the shit out you of that register. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and I'm then, uh, to go. 
And so I went to the register and I go, hey, you want to sell me this box? Uh, it's empty. George said you guys probably sell it to me. He goes, yeah. But then he goes, and I was about to say, you know, just sell it to me for the price of the, the minifigure, whatever. He goes, you can have it. You know, they just throw them out anyway. You can have it. All right, cool. So he sets it down and he rings up my stuff and puts them in the box. He goes, I'll just put them back in there. I'm like, yeah, that's fine. So anyway, so here I am thinking, all right, cool. Dad just scored my kid a rare box. figure. Oh, a rare figure, right? So I get home and I go, look, daddy got you surprised. I got you the rare figure and I gave him the box. You know, he's kind of excited that he got the rare minion. And then he opens up his first mystery box. It's that fucking figure. He so got the chase figure. Oh, well, I'm that cool. He's got two now. <laughs> well, yeah. One, you know, it's called eBay. So it's like, oh, man. All right, well, there goes my father of the year. But yeah, it kind of blew up in my face. He got it anyway, so I didn't have to get the box. All but... that struggle for the box that was free. What's in the box? you profiled someone. The box. What's in the box? Yeah. Well, <laughs> anyway. Anyway, what he does with his extra figures, he actually stores them in his closet. So I've asked him, do you want to give it to one of your friends? Or do you want to whatever? Because he has all these other mystery figures that he, you know, from other play sets. He goes, no, let's keep it in the closet in case I lose one. He's got a backup. Oh, like he's got that, a plan. Yeah, like he's got a plan. The plastic, keep it. Keep yeah, it no, I put him back in the plastic okay. and I put him in the closet. Like, I like how right. he has back stock. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, back stock. Yeah. Like, he learned this behavior from you. Honestly. Yeah, yeah. He looks in his catalog. Uh, yeah, I got that one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh... I love it. Wait, so are you still going to give him like the dollar bill for the tooth or whatever underneath the pillow? Five bucks. I guess it's the growing, going rate is five bucks. Well, inflation. I get it. Well, in California, I'm sure in Missouri, it's like it's 50 like cents. 50 cents. Shit, but <laughs> a they're quarter. in there, right? <laughs> uh, there's only. Oh, man. There's only 18 teeth. Maybe more. I know it's not 36. Adults have 36. Now, don't count your own because you don't have as many as your kid. You, you guys don't know this, but kid. Laura's literally sticking her fingers she's, in her mouth, yeah, she's counting, counting her, her teeth. teeth. She There's couldn't use her tongue to do it. She had to be to 18 use... on the bottom, 18 on the top. 24. No way. Unless you still have your wisdom teeth. Somebody... No, I don't. Oh, you lost them? That explains a lot. That's, no, I didn't that... use them. I had them removed. <laughs> Ooh, that explains a lot. Two, three. There she goes. Four, counting. Five. Six. Seven. All right, you guys ready for oh, the you, answer? Did you say seven? That was a question. Was that are a question? You guys, are you guys ready for the actual answer? 28 or 30. Okay, 28 and 36 is what we have on the board, right? The answer is... Without wisdom teeth, 30 with. Most 36. adults have 32 permanent teeth. Ah, 32. Mm -hmm. My That's math right. Is wrong. So 16 top and bottom. What about uh, toddlers? I know it's way less than that. No, because if he's getting in his big boy teeth, his real teeth, it's going to be 32. What's no. 32? Times five. You know what though? I go count the damn teeth in his mouth right now. Here's, it, yeah, it says most adults have thirty-two teeth. Yeah. Um, and but, then as for children, that's a good question. Okay, I'll tell you the children right now. It's a lot less. They How many have, no, teeth they have... do I'm gonna go count my son's teeth? I'll be right back. Have. <laughs> uh, you know what? Kids have twenty teeth. Yes, that's true. But then they are gonna when they as they their adult teeth come in. They're gonna grow those thirty twos. Those I know, no, 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 of course. But they no, have that's twenty. What I was saying. So yeah, they have kids they have said, less teeth, but as they get older, yeah. they get more teeth. Yeah, yeah. They have Look, twenty teeth, and my then... wisdom teeth are still here. All right. Oh, I you have wisdom. wisdom teeth? No, still? I'm kidding. I don't. I'm just looking uh -huh. for an excuse to why Laura don't know shit about teeth. It says that between the ages of six and seven is when they start getting their permanent teeth start coming in. Their thirty, mm. their thirty twos. Okay, so I guess the 32 that come in don't matter because you're not giving money for the tooth that comes in. You're giving money That's for right. the tooth that lost. That, that left, okay, yes. What's 20 times five? Two, four. It's $100. What the hell? Let's just teach math in Missouri. $100. There we go. <laughs> I just did it. All my fingers. <laughs> I just learned my multiplication table. Um, like my they mom. still doing Common Core in Missouri? <laughs> what do you guys got going on out there? <laughs> Using your fingers? Like this is the movie uh, Stand and Deliver? I literally <laughs> my mom times twenty a learning disability. I my can't mind. teach these kids. I have to fucking calculate. <laughs> Shut up! I know how to do it. 
Do you know how to win the bad Belichick <laughs> way? We cheat. Uh, <laughs> Achilles heel. Math. Math. Math is. Uh, I did get that today. Somebody's like, I got a question for you. I was like, it better not be math. Like, what? I was like, okay, good. <laughs> you should tell me what kind of question this is. Like, preface it a little bit for me. But... I can do math when I'm given a formula and a calculator. Okay. It's like a quick in your head math. Got it. You ready for this one? No, no. Oh, that's quick. quick in your head that's math. quick, too. That's quick quitting math. <laughs> you're quick. You're good at quitting math. Okay, ready? Let's see who gets it first. This is an easy one. Okay, I'm going to ask one. Okay. Here we go. It's an easy one. Seven times eight. Seven times seven is 42. Wow, not even. Okay. Oh, not... <laughs> but then plus. Oh, not... good Lord. All That's right. enough. We're good. We, we can stop. I never fucking learned my multiplication. Did. What's seven times seven? 49. 64. Huh? 60... <laughs> <laughs> idiots. I got idiots. 68, this sorry. This guy claims he has wisdom. He's a, he's a goddamn idiot. <laughs> Wow, I got my wisdom teeth. I'll say the alphabet A yeah. B barbecue <laughs> seven thirty eight. Like what? Oh, you know what? I, Close enough. I five. Oh, you were wrong too, though. I didn't know. Forty nine. Seven times seven is forty nine. Seven times eight is fifty six. Seven times eight. Oh, okay. Yes, I didn't give you that answer 56. yet because I was waiting for one of you to get it correct. Oh, yeah, yeah, Somebody yeah, yeah, said forty two. Yeah. Someone said sixty four. Sixty four. I was off. Cool. Eight times eight is sixty four. Yes. Oh. I think. I think we all know what we're. What the conclusion of this is. That's why the Asian guy sort of stuck around. Yeah. Nailed this shit. That Johnny would have known that. Someone text Johnny really fast. Ask him. Don't Google it. Don't calculator it. Tell me what it is. He's he'll he'll be the only Asian guy we know that's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. If so. you if I text my Asian friend before I even finish the text sending, he'll send the answer to me. <laughs> All right, well, we all watched the movie on Netflix that is very highly rated on Netflix. One of the highest rated movies I've ever had on Rotten Tomato. It's called The Hitman. And it is uh, not what you think. Not what you think. Um, but, Glenn uh, Powell. Sorry. Glenn Powell, who you guys know from, come on, oh, come Top on. Gun. Top Gun Maverick. That's right. Top and Gun also Maverick. PGA commercials on Peacock. <laughs> Really? Okay. Yeah. All right. So it stars Glenn Powell and uh, Adria Arjona. Adria I Ar had to. Oh, no. I, there were so many people in this movie that I had to look up because I was like, I fucking know you. She was in True Detective season two. Yes, you are correct. I like the way she you talks. Are correct. And I enjoy it. No other real actors that I realize I, mean, I recognize besides them. But Rita. Um, Oh, yeah, yeah. Rita, so she plays Claudette. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Rita was actually the, the next big actor I knew. Actually, you're right. Good call out. Good yeah, call and then out. another face that I recognize, no idea the name, the other cop. The yeah, one Austin, that... Austin Amel Amelio. Yeah, I did recognize him. I just couldn't yeah. place where he was. What I had to in. look him up. Yeah, I couldn't place him either, but I had to look him up. I'm like, I fucking know that dude. And yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, walking yeah. Dead. Yeah, there you go. The Walking Dead and also the and also Fear of the Walking Dead. Yeah. So Hitman on Netflix as it's the number one movie at the moment. It is a comedy romantic comedy something. It's something. Um all right. Well, we'll start with Carlos. Carlos, what'd you take on Hitman on Netflix? I don't know why you started with me. I did not like it. Well, it's good. That's that's okay. I uh I mean, I thought it was. It started out well. It started. It was interesting. I liked. I did like his character. I don't know. There's something about the way it just kept going on and on and on. I'm like, okay, can we just miss dragging on too long, man? Um, I mean, I think that he fell into his role too quickly. Like he was totally comfortable with it, just way too quickly for being like the geeky nerdy guy who was afraid at the beginning. Uh, what is he? Uh, was it a university professor, or a college professor? Yeah, he's a college professor. Worked yeah. part time for the cops, doing video audio surveillance. All of a sudden, he's an undercover hitman. I thought this movie was going to take a different direction because he kept saying over and over that the hitman is a myth. There's no such thing as a hitman. And then when he met the woman, I'm like, okay, is she a hitman? And is she somehow going to work him? to blame him for her husband's murder. 
And then when she described the husband as a dangerous man, I thought, okay, this guy's some sort of cartel, some sort of, you know, drug guy. And this is going to turn, you know, it's going to take a turn for the worse for this guy. But it never did. Nothing happened to this guy. He's very good at what he did. He even played uh, Bateman in one of his disguises from American Psycho. Um, I mean, I thought those parts were entertaining, but I said as the story progressed, I'm like, okay, where is this going? And then uh, he was okay with hiding a murder and then murdering a cop. Uh, so I don't know. It's, it was entertaining. Hey, it's, it's, but uh, you know, it all worked out because he replaced it, those two humans with two other humans. Well, that's true. Yeah, 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 so it all it's all even, Stephen. Yeah, you know? but I mean, I guess I I see why I I mean I can totally understand why he did it. She's a smoke show, you know. So yeah, you're right. Murder. You're right. Good call. Yeah, murder. <laughs> Isn't that why most dudes murder people? Because a woman is a smoke show, or just Actually, somehow murder the smoke show. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, is that but true. <laughs> and then uh, that's true. And then um. Yeah, it was a little disappointing. The husband wasn't a badass like I thought he was going to be. And she wasn't who I thought she was going to be. But I knew she killed the husband. That was just totally super easy to figure out. But I would give it, I mean, I'd give it two and a half. Two and a half for Hitman on Netflix. Okay. Laura, what you got? I agree with a lot of the stuff that Carlos said. I, I think I enjoyed it more than he did. Um, But some of my notes... It's just th- this was so classic. So what's the actor's name? Glenn Miller, you said, Lafayette? Glenn Powell. Glenn Powell. I don't know. Glenn Miller. He's a fucking 1940s. That's Steve Miller's brother. Oh, it, Abracadabra? It, yeah. Uh whatever you know? his name is. Glenn, whatever his name is. It was so classic, Hollywood, because he's so fucking hot. But they're gonna make him play the nerd, right? You're gonna put the glasses on him and right. we're gonna yeah, make yeah. Him and, and, and he has call- sandals with socks. Yeah. Yeah, uh, no, that fucking body and that face and the hair. No, he's he's a ten, and uh, I'd. Fuck oh yeah, you're too. you're into Just that like kind of hair. Head. You're into oh, the uh, yeah, that yeah, kind yeah, of hair, yeah. the longer hair. Uh, so that that was just entertaining. Uh, but, but I liked it. I liked the setting, Nola. I love New Orleans. The music was also really good. I like old timey jazz, so that was fun. Glenn has range. Uh, he can play a lot of different characters. I thought that was fun to watch. And then the act, the the part where he was playing the redneck with the other redneck doing like the shotgun pull. Oh yeah, with the tattoos on his neck. Yeah, and yeah, I was yeah. like, that is not a fake accent. That is a that is too fucking good to be real. And I looked it up. He was raised in Texas. The actor was raised. Uh... In Texas. I was like, nailed it. <laughs> people do not do southern accents that great unless they're from there and i i really liked this movie in the same tone that carlos did like i thought there was going to be a big twist i was like is she playing him is this other guy going to come in is it going to like do a complete 180 it got so dark so fast when they put uh, spoilers they put the plastic bag over this cop's head and let him die on the floor while they're fucking. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit. And yep. The well, ends with a happy. It's the end. only way to murder someone. Mm-hmm. And I was just yeah. like. Plus, they don't want him to watch. <laughs> right. Yeah, that'd be, that'd, that'd be that'd messed be up. Yeah. That's what the you fuck. can't join. I, I would have. Like this movie a lot more if it took the first half of this happy go lucky kind of romantic comedy and then just like turned the whole thing on its head and got weirdly dark and depraved and or how it really went, which is they got caught and they each turned on each other. That's how it usually goes. Ah, oh, yes. Um, I don't know. It it was good. It was sudden in the ending. I did really like the um speech that he gave kind of as the professor which by the way what kind of professor is this guy he was talking about psychology but then he was talking about sociology and then he was talking about philosophy he's just what what fucking- uh, he's a professor that's yeah. all you oh, psychology know. and philosophy phil- 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 what if he just <laughs> what if he just sociology he's yeah, just yeah. throwing all this shit in there yeah he's a professor I like his lecture at the end 
about objective truth because he's like, I used to think that there was objective truth. Now I'm like, whatever. And I was, I was like, yeah, that's where believing in no objective truth believes you and or leads you into believing whatever you do, you can justify it. Well, yeah, even remember he says when you leave this room, be who you want to be, like almost like just make it up, but always be that person and carry that confidence. So I don't believe in objective truth. mm -hmm. There's nothing to stop you from doing that. That's right. I don't know. Um, That's pretty damn good advice. No, it's fucking terrible advice. Awesome. Great advice. Get up. I'm now a drug dealer. What? (laughs) (laughs) If you can dream it, be it. Be it. There you go. Yes. Uh, So in general, I give this a three and a half out of five. I want really, really, really like it. And I did until that last bit. And it just didn't go in the direction that I wanted to. But it was enjoyable. So three and a half out of five. Yeah. Three and a half is a good score. I didn't mind the ending because I ex- expected a generic ending. I expected them to get caught or I expected, you know, one of them to go down for whatever it is. But no, we didn't get that at all. We didn't get the what the basically generic ending. We got like, oh, wait, they got away with it. Now they have a family with kids and everything like, you know, like eight years later, whatever it is. I'm like it all worked out. It all, and now this guy is no longer now he's a. Uh, What's the character he plays when he's undercover? Ron. 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 Now he's basically Ron. He's a he blend is. of Gary and Ron. He is. He's a blend. Makes and you write about one thing. Glenn Powell, he's good. He carries this movie really well. He's <laughs> He is really good. He actually came out recently and asked him, would you ever be in a superhero movie? He said, no. That is not whatever. Unless it's Batman. That's <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> well, he left something open. Okay. Would Superhero movie. If Marvel fucking offered them shit, you know we'd be jumping at it. Cyclops yeah, make a great Cyclops. Oh, he would. Good call. Too old. Too old. Mm-hmm. He's too old. For it just depends on when you said it. Yeah, you dummy. Mm-hmm. No. Too old. <clears throat> um, I would. Uh, but he'd be he he'd be an okay Batman. He'd probably be a better Green Lantern. You know. But yeah. Booster Gold. Oh, he'd be a good booster gold, but no. you know we all know who's getting that role. We all, we Ooh, all who's don't even try role? to hide a Chris Pratt. We know, we know what you're doing. Oh, Chris, Pratt. we know what you're doing. Matter of fact, they just hired a whole script, three three writers for Booster Gold. Uh, Danny McBride is one of them. Who um, is Booster McGold? <laughs> yes, that is his name, and we will not call him that. Booster, booster Gold, McGold. not McGold. He's not a fucking Irishman. Yeah, I'm Booster McGold. <laughs> Is Booster Gold? The so Booster Gold travels from the future. He's a, he's a he's narcissist. A, he's a, yeah, he's a narcissist time traveler who like wants to take credit for shit and thinks he's a big time superhero when he's just really a kind of a con man. Like he knows what happens in the past, so he goes back and stop things to get credit. Right. So like imagine nine eleven, he would have stopped it and said, "I did that. I'm a superhero. I'm super cool." Then he'll well, do that he another it. time. Another kind time. of super. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Booster McGold. So there we go. <laughs> hey, this week, score. only one movie's coming out. Oh, what's your score? Hitman. I said Did three and a half. I said three. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, Gary Johnson, the character that Glenn Powell was playing, was never a professor. Yeah. He was always oh, a cop. I thought he was a professor. I thought they mm-hmm. should. He was no? always a cop. Um, he became a professor later in life, like much, uh, but not. Oh, I forgot what it was. Because he wanted to be a certain type of professor, but he couldn't pass the whatever. But anyway, and he never murdered anyone. They made that part up. Uh-oh. I like that at the end. They were very clear that it was like, yeah, yeah we, we, love we it. made that one up. So that was yeah. fun. And I like the pictures that they showed of him and his different personas. That was cool. And he's clearly not as good looking as Glenn Powell. Well, of course better. not. Better. Whoa. Way better. What? Super. He's not a 10 and then he put on glasses. I'm a four. I'm a dork. Look at my. Wow. So you tell people who wear glasses are so dorks? Well, we have one here on the show. So, oh, he just took them off. So, that. Oh, 10 all the way. Carlos just took his glasses off. I don't even recognize him. Wow. That is just, <laughs> oh, you know what? Ten, uh, 10? Lying to his so face. Bad. That four. is not nice. <laughs> four, 10. Ten four. I know math. Four. I'm good at math. It's not math, really. It's Difference just of, numbers. <laughs> Difference of six. 
<laughs> I like your idea of being good at math. Hey, I know math. What do you mean? Very 7, 14, 38. <laughs> Those are just numbers. What do you mean? I'm pretty sure you can use them in math. That is bigger than <laughs> I know that. I know which symbol to use between the two. Right exactly. <laughs> math. You don't know I'm, physics like I know physics. I'm at the shit out of that. So the only movie <laughs> come out this weekend is Inside Out Part 2, the sequel to the Pixar movie Inside Out. It's the only one coming out this week. It's probably going to dominate the box office because last week the Bad Boys dominated the box office. Uh, surprisingly, made... Bad Boys 4 made the least amount of all openings for Bad Boys. Okay, bad... But still made like $90 million, right? Something like that? Pretty good. Last I checked, which was mm, Tuesday, uh-huh. yeah, $54 million. No. Domestic. Really? Domestic. Yeah, yeah. Worldwide, I think it's already up to, to like 104 or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah, should yeah, take yeah. Charlotte to go see Inside Out. We got. I, just, I thought she was going to take her to Bad Boys. <laughs> no. <laughs> we went to McDonald's and she got a toy. Uh, the Happy Meal. What was it? Uh, Jealousy? Okay. Envy. That's the new one. Yeah. There's a couple of new ones. There's three new ones. Yeah. Enwa. Or, yeah. Is that how you say that? You don't know. Mm-hmm. I think that's right. No. Uh no, I don't, I've been drinking. I don't know. Uh, then envy and uh, anxiety. Anxiety is a new one, yes. That's the big one, the big dude, right? Big. Oh, anxiety is a little orange one. He's right? the new one. Yeah, he's he's the orange one. Yeah, the new orange. It's a big one. You're right. It's on the back mm-hmm. of the Happy Meal box. I just looked at it. Mm-hmm. I don't... Whatever. So you I, so you got a toy and a free box. A toy and a free box. Yeah. Congrats, so did I. Did you talk to Phil or whoever that guy was? George. It's George. George. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. No, George. no talk to George. Hmm. Good old George. But uh, this weekend is my 40th birthday party. So. Wow. I wow. would like to say that I'm going to take Charlotte to go see Inside Out 2, but I'm probably going to be too hungover on Sunday. Well, <laughs> c- congrats. 40 years old. Thank you. Wow. Halfway there, huh? Uh, life is long. People say life is short. It's long in the middle. That's just it. You know, you get to that point, you're like, oh, how much more done- do I got left? Yeah, it's like I've already done this too long. <laughs> like long. It's just like I feel like I've been like a million different people. You know, yeah, and halfway yeah. through, how many more versions of myself am I gonna meet? Just I've had enough of this bitch. I've seen her a lot. Make as many as you can. Make as many as you can. Been so a lot there you go. Of- hey, Creature Commandos, the the show from DC, comes out in October. I think it is. If it's not October, it's December. But it will be coming out. It's the very first James Gunn property at DC. Creature Commandos. So it's actually about an elite squad of uh, uh, monsters. So there's a vampire in it. There's a uh, Frankenstein, the Frankenstein's Bride of Frankenstein. in it. The Bride of Frankenstein. Um, I don't even know. The menu. Anyway, I think they're. I think they hunt vampires. I think that's what it is. Anywho, they're also in Superman the movie, so we'll see how that plays out. So, who knows? And in uh, one of them in the new Peacemaker season two. Correct. Correct. And Vigilante will be back. Good. In Great. Uh, Peacemaker too. Right. Yes, yes. I don't see why um, it wouldn't. I don't see why. It wouldn't. Yeah. Update on I told we talked about this before. The Slim Shady album or actually the death of Slim Shady. Mm-hmm. Uh July 5th. July 5th. So. What about July 5th? That's when it comes out. The death of Slim Shady. Came out. No, no, the first song came out. Who did? Single. The album comes out July 5th. And then Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg dropped an album the next week after. There you go. Have you guys been following the boys? I've seen something on my feed about like comes out next week. Oh, that's season next week. four. Apparently, season right. five is the last season. It is the finale. Season, season five. four coming out. Wait, this today? I think it's this yeah, week. Today. today. Yeah. Because I saw some like yeah. reactions to it on my on social media scrollings. Have you guys caught up with uh, Star Wars Acolyte by any chance? No. I heard that uh, the latest oh, episode. Yeah, it's already out. I did. What a stupid episode. Oh, I my heard God. It's wild. Oh, I heard so it's wild. Can you tell us why, though? I'll tell you why. Yeah, because I heard so, it's like really wild. Two things. Well, three things. Maybe four things. Maybe the whole goddamn episode. But uh, 
So I thought episodes one and two were good, had a good flow, had good choreography, good story. Then we find out that the reason that one of the twins named May, she's hunting down four specific Jedi and wants to kill them because you're made to think that they killed the little village or whatever she came from. They were responsible for the destruction of it. Turns out May's little punk ass is responsible. She set the place on fire because she didn't want her twin sister to leave. So she told her twin sister, goes, well, how are you going to stop me? I want to be a Jedi. And May says, I'm going to kill you. And then locks her in her room and sets the place on fire. Well, how do you set stone on fire? And how does fire spread from stone? The whole place is made of stone. How do you do this? I was a little confused. Um, and then here's the shitty part. Apparently, this is a coven of lesbian witches. Oh, God. <laughs> but here's the kicker. Here's the Eric kick Cartman in the teeth. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in Phantom, <laughs> in Phantom Menace, Anakin Skywalker is basically Jesus, mother's immaculate conception. There's no father. He just suddenly became force raped. The whatever little funky things that make up the force. Glorious. Huh? Metachlorians. Oh, that's yes, right. Metachlorians. Um, yeah. Just like, oh, you can take Church that of Scientology, COVID, right? No, you oh. need the thing from Scientology. Do you hold the two things? <laughs> yeah. And apparently, these things created Anakin and his mom. Go figure. That's what they reveal that he was. But he's no, that's yeah, in Phantom Menace. Yeah, yeah. But, but here in Episode Three, two lesbians created twins uh, using the Force. Oh, that's fucking stupid. And here's a Kathleen kicker. A little bit of a kicker. The mom, or one of the moms, is black. The twins mm -hmm. are black. Yep. But the one that carried them uh -huh. is a white woman oh. that looks like Darth Maul. With like the spikes on her head, bald spikes and on the head. And really? Stuff. Yeah, so I'm like, really? You carried these twins and they look nothing like you? No huh? spikes, no black what? and white. Her black and red face. Well, she wasn't black and white. She was more like a pale and had lines on her face. But it was. But she did have the pointy ears and she had the spikes. I'm like, really? None of them look like you. But you carried them. You were very specific about telling her that I carried them. They can't go anywhere. I carried them. First, I want to know how scissoring, how hard were you scissoring to cause a friction? No, no, stop. That would stop. cause... Nope. Birth. <laughs> they I want to know. have the force. They can they can create ghost dongs. Okay, we've seen ghosts. I know they Jedi. weren't using lightsabers as dildos. They put a hole right through you. Oh, well, they may have like conjured a ghost <laughs> Jedi and it's like, let me use just your dong. That's true. A spirit. A spirit. Yeah. It's just listen. Spirit dick. <laughs> They're trying to ruin Star Wars to the point of ridiculousness. And Barely. again, oh, this is because we have to incorporate as many women as possible in Star Wars. Now we have lesbian witches creating Jedi babies with their force. I'm like, they're ridiculous. That's how. So Eric Cartman was right. He's totally right. I told you Eric Cartman was right. <laughs> Kathy <laughs> Kennedy made him les make him a lesbian lead and make him suck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get a woman, and she has to be a lesbian lead, no matter what. And she's gonna suck. And she's gonna especially suck. if she's a strong, powerful, like not a porn star. Then of course she has to be a lesbian because you can't have a strong woman without her wanting vagina, just like a man. We can't forget that. That's very important. Strong women want <laughs> pussy. Like strong women, yeah, because they're like, you know what, I could do to that pussy. See, I know how to handle that pussy. That's it why just, I it's just love pussy. It, it just makes like the first two episodes were good, and then I heard about the third one, and I was like, "Why? Yeah, why did you do this? Like, yeah, Let's see the anguish, listener. Uh, it face. just makes no sense. <laughs> I feel legitimately bad for you. I'm I'm not in this world. I don't give a shit about Star Wars, but that's pretty bad. I mean, that's the thing too. I'm not like, oh man, Star Wars is great, but it's almost like every turn, it's like let's just ruin it more and more. Yeah, I'm not a nut job Star Wars person like some of these, but it seems like the more they make, the more you appreciate the original three. So like, much. Couldn't we just stop just, there? We uh, just stop. I blame George Lucas for that too. But 
But that's the beauty of these, all these sequels, remakes, whatever, whatever. They can never take the original away from you. And fuck people who say, oh, that's canon. You have to accept it. Fuck canon. He's the writer. What does he know? Art is in the arms of the people. Once you let it loose, it belongs to you as an individual in the sense of like, I decide what it means. So I decide what is canon and what isn't. And the thing about the Star Wars universe, nothing evolves. Nothing. This is supposed to be set way before The Phantom Menace, way before Anakin, way before all that. They all have the same ships. They all have the same wardrobe. It's all the same. And Everything like, the same. None of them it's are like... smart enough to evolve. I'm like, why are you still wearing these robes, man? I'm pretty sure we're going to somehow see the freaking empire show up that's what's that's, that's what's gonna be this disappointing part they're gonna have stuff in there like oh okay you just reverted back to the same old shit oh yeah because all those star wars guys who read all the books and all the comic books and just everything everything they're gonna know who the villain is dark dickalist or whatever his name is i don't i don't know <laughs> but he probably carries a three-way saber i have no idea we already saw that remember we saw the three-way saber already the cross one the cross oh yeah. the cross one yeah that- yeah yeah, yeah. Maybe he'll have a quad saber. That was um, Ren. I forgot his name. Ren. Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren. Ben. Ben. You know what? That that right ben there. Solo. Still a very good movie that they should completely ruin. The Why Force did they Awakens. name it Ben anyway? I mean, Leia and Han had nothing. Ben. Wait, Force Awakens, Awakens is the first one of the, the first one. Yeah, the first yeah, one. Yeah, it was good. I watched it. it. I, I'm not really into Star Wars. I watched it and I was like, "This is cool." Yeah. And then I watched the second one, or like started the second one and i was like mm, no <laughs> i think i stopped yeah that. well you know who i blame for was that, all though? about nostalgia and it really yeah. played off well i I blame jj abrams because he passed the baton to on Rain, the second one Ryan he just, johnson he should have done the whole thing he but should've. nope nope yeah. nope and that's how jj abrams is and that's why he forever sucks Aww. speaking of ryan johnson yeah so that, not rain anymore huh Ah, he's not cool enough to be Rain. Rain's actually kind of a cool name. Um, what is it? Glass Onion Three in production. Knives out, you mean. Knives out. Yeah, yeah, ah, yeah. Out. Knives Out Three. I'm totally. Yeah. First one was great. Second oh, one. Glass Onion. Yeah, Knives Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah, seen um, already the people that they've um, some people they've already casted for it or are in it. In a show that Daniel Craig has some, oh, he's got your your lengthy hair, your type of hair it goes down to his shoulders. Oh, really? Like me? Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Craig does. Interesting. Yeah. It's called um, "Wake Up, Dead Man: A Knives Out Mystery." Ah, yes, yeah. See if there's a photo of Daniel Craig. I know they posted one recently. I love that. I love that. This is a. Oh my God! It's a new like ip that's gotten popular and they're making sequels can we appreciate the novelty of that for a moment they're not rehashing the past and creating something new yeah hey, i mean Nef- netflix paid a boatload so rightfully so knives yeah. out 2 was so good yeah so jeremy renner is in the cast yeah oh, is he? so is uh josh brolin yep oh wow uh it's a marvel movie <laughs> <laughs> Um, that might be the only people you actually know. You probably know by face, but like name names. Those are the two big. Oh, Kerry Washington joined the cast. Ooh. Mila Kunis is in the cast. Oh, that's fun. oh wow, that's a lot of people. Uh, and Thomas Hayden Church has joined the cast. Is that Punisher? No, the Sandman. Thomas Hayden Church is the Sandman. He's also from that movie, um, about the wine in Napa with um. Oh. Uh, sideways. sideways sideways yeah sideways yeah 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 he was also in wings remember that show wings Wings. he was a pilot yeah 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 he's the mechanic was he the mechanic yeah he's right. mechanic he was the mechanic. the mechanic yeah yep 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 i don't know what shitty shows so i wasn't quite sure i didn't really watch wings yeah it was on i mean it was always like on after something i watched i was like not wings no pass sorry yeah i'm good i watched some of it i, I can't say that it was the best but... i would go straight to twin peaks God, too um from uh primarily i know him from sherlock bbc he played uh moriarty oh yeah, yeah. he's got his uh, own show uh what's the show on netflix ripley? yes ripley i haven't watched that yet but i want to. oh he's in he's the lead in ripley 
He is Ripley, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, oh, Jesus Christ. This is star star packed. I'm telling you, Netflix gave him enough money to do it. That's for damn sure. Good for them. Yep, 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 yep. Um Rain Johnson needs to just stick to his own IPs because Rain, huh? Oh, yeah, Rain. Ryan. He said he was cool, so I call him Rain now. No, right. I didn't say he was cool. I said he oh. has to be cool to be called Rain because Rain is a cool name. It's not a cool name. Storm is a cool, cool name. name. Now, if yeah. you're a woman from Africa. St- wow. Really? Hmm. Interesting. Do you not know your X-Men lore? You I don't know anything about X-Men. Uh, okay. I'm familiar. I know. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. Oh, you're familiar, are you? Yeah. Name five X-Men. <laughs> Psylocke. Mm-hmm. Uh, nope. Oh, wait. Psylocke. Yes. Okay, yes. I was like, Psylocke. I was like, okay. Storm. Okay. Wolverine. Yep. 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 Gambit. Uh huh. Cyclops. Yep. Jean Grey. Yep. Uh, Professor X. Okay. Uh, Jubilee. Yep. Um, oh, I can so close to 10. Fuck. Yep. The blue uh, guy. Uh, oh, uh, Beast. Yep. You and go. you failed. Yeah. And you failed. And you failed because you were supposed failed. to name five. I said, yeah, ten. exactly. I said name I five. And I went. Higher. I'm an overachiever. Look at me. I want I extra know my credit. X-Men. I know yeah. numbers. Here's my math. Yeah. One, oh, two, I got ten three, fingers. Two is ten. <laughs> oh, look at me. I cannot taste these kids. So good job. Good job. Like, Laura doesn't know what that's from. She has no clue. Nope. No clue. Have you ever seen the movie uh, <sighs> Stand and Deliver? Nope. About the math teacher in the nope. in the ghetto high school and no, nope. yeah. And then South Park Mr. made fun Escalante. of it. Mr. Escalante, yeah. Jaime Escalante. Jaime Escalante. Jaime. Escalante. Jaime. Escalante. Yeah, he uh, taught at my school the year I graduated. Yes, he was all. He was there. He was at a, He was a teacher at my high school. Yeah. And he would <laughs> only teach Hispanic kids. And he was. Um, Did I qualify? Played... What's I up? Did not qualify. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> He um he he was played by Edward James Olmos in probably his most famous role. So. Outside anyway. of Stargate, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. And he had a bodyguard. He had to have a bodyguard. He did have a bodyguard. Yep. Mr. Escalante. He, he had his own personal van that the school paid for, school district. Yeah. No, yeah. no. Anyway, I think that's all we got. I got nothing else. And you know what? I'm mean, Escalante, math teacher. Just want to throw that out there. So there you go. <laughs> There you go. There's no math like I know math. That's for mm-hmm. sure. That you go. Fucking new math. Again? Huh? <laughs> now we're moving on. Ten. Um, yeah. Four. No. I don't want to. <laughs> just unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. That's all I got. Oh, crap. Anybody have anything else? <laughs> no, Laura's drunk. She don't care. Yeah. Mildly. Oh, wait a second. Before we go, uh, update on your Ozempic? Yeah. 14 pounds? So it's going good. It's yeah. going good. I'm bad at math. No, 13. 13. Oh, yeah. Your math is horrible. Yeah, I am bad. But you get at line. You just stuck at 14. You carry the one. You carried the one. I'll carry the one. Yeah, going good. I uh, I upped uh, my dosage. I was at the starter dose, 2.5 milligrams this week. I decided the food noise and like the, the snack impulse. So had seven to milligrams. No. I had, I was at 2.5. I multiplied it by two. Oh. Five. Five, years. that's five. Okay, good, good, good. Exactly. I like five. how you two are competing on who's better at math at this point. That's the, the best part. Remedial math. <laughs> uh-huh, exactly. <laughs> oh, man, she beat me. I'll get her next Any time. Any So I, I, that's my new dose as of this Sunday. Going good, going good. I was. What's little, the highest you can go? I think it's like 12 or 12 and Ooh. a half. Uh, on this medication so i'm hoping that i can stay at five for a while because i, well, I sounds like, like a lot 28 more pounds to lose till i hit my minimum goal if i can get skinnier i'm on board but what's your 20, max goal 150 what's your minimum 151 no, no, like max max goal in the sense of like the skinniest yes yeah, you want to get but what's the minimum I think we're talking about this. Oh, the fattest, skinniest. That my, my yes, yes. The goal. least. The least That's amount of weight you would lose, but you're still satisfied. Is 150. The okay. most that I would lose, 125. That's outrageous. I that would, is outrageous. So you want to get to 125? That would be your max. 
like the ma- if I got lower than 125, I would be scared for myself. Yes. So the what minimum you want to get to is 150. Yeah. I got 28. Yeah. I, I know math. You don't know math. I know math. Minimum and maximum. I, know I know that this I've stuff. Never been 120. You know my favorite part though? I, I could I, imagine I think Laura's I was like 130, 135. Laura works with math in her brain by weight loss when people True. ask. She's like, okay, how much weight would I have to lose to get this answer right? True. She just True. breaks it down that way. It's pretty good. How women think. Now, if I lost Number eight seven. pounds seven times, mm-hmm. it's 64. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's 42. Like, what? Idiots. Goddamn idiots. Anyway, all right, that's our show, everyone. That's all we got. Remember to check out the link below for the show if you live in the LA area. If you are anywhere near Hollywood, check that out. Um, and uh, that's all we got. Bad it. Bad it. Follies. Bad it. Bad it. Follies. All right. Well, that's all we got. Laura, anything else? No, you good? Okay. Carlos, he's good. He already tells a sad story about being a father of the year. So we don't deal with that anymore. All right. Thanks for tuning in to Nerds Talking Podcast for what? Coming up. It's coming up. What's Sunday. coming up? Happy Father's Day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy <laughs> Father's Day. <laughs> Looking yeah. at his calendar. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> okay, yes, yes. <laughs> Happy Father's Day, everyone out there. Um, and um, let's see. Yeah, still looking, looking, looking for his card in the mail. I know. I, don't know. I just buy my own card. Buy my own card. And uh I sign it with all the these mailbox. Names. Oh, not this year. Thank oh, God. Wow. Oh, and then I can look at my bank account. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Oh, um, wow. And then, uh, oh, and then Laura turns 40 and Father's Day. Is it the same day? Well, no, Father's actually, Day's I'm on the Sunday. 22nd, but I'm having the big party this weekend. Oh, you are lame. Because my daughter's birthday is the day after mine. So her. Oh, oh, look at you guys. Oh, you're like, you're not stealing my thunder. I'm going to yeah. get drunk as shit. Hell no. Yeah. <laughs> Babysitter's coming all day Saturday to take care, care of these bitches. Mama's getting drunk. <laughs> I like how the girls are them bitches. That's, that's my favorite part. <laughs> this is my love language, insulting people. Like, how are your kids doing? You mean them bitches? <laughs> <laughs> That's the best part. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. There's talking to podcast for Laura. Goodbye. For Carlos. Bye bye. And I'm Lafayette. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. <laughs>